director yes i think uh, aarti will join in soon rc okay aarti will join yes, yes. and rc has also indicated that they have you know started to record the proceedings okay sir so i think we will go ahead but uh, once again uh, uh, very good morning to you and other uh, students good morning sir thank you thank you, thank you. so um, i was thinking that uh, today since this is the last day for the uh, mda e uh, 411 uh, which is a growth and philosophy of for distance education so maybe in the beginning we will have a small recapitulation what we discussed and what we are going to discuss to today because from uh, day after tomorrow we will begin with uh, mda e uh, 412 which is uh, the instructional design so i think it would be better if we have you know a little uh, we revisit what our discussion that we had during the the spells in the last 5 days plus today that will be the sixth day so uh, i would like to emphasize that uh, uh, the mede program is one of those programs which university uh started uh, in 1980 89 it was initially offered as a dde diploma in distance education which was eventually upgraded into pg dde post graduate diploma in distance education and subsequently the master of arts in distance education was introduced and uh, i would like to congratulate the university for two reasons one that uh, the program has been uh, making a steady progress and it has been serving not only the students which have been enrolled through you know but it has also been serving the interests of uh, uh, most of the correspondence course institutions or most of the directorate of distance education their teachers the faculty of the uh, open universities which have been established in the country but far more importantly it has been serving the teaching community of uh, southeast asian nations because uh, the university uh, has offered this program in such a way that it can uh, very easily uh, be modeled to the needs and uh, demands of the respective countries so uh, keeping that uh, you know peculiarity or rather i must say the quality of the program the program has been now offered at the global level and especially in the african continent in the sub saharan continent and pacific region we have lot of uh, students who are actually following pursuing the program and uh, besides uh, there are lot of other universities abroad which have been collaborating with the university and they have been offering the program through their own uh, operational system <clears throat> so i am just making these comments or these points uh, just to let you know that uh, this program is is uh, conceptualized in such a way that this can be adapted into to the needs of any other country so that is how we have you know taken stock of the distance education in uh, the african continent distance education in the asian continent in distance education in the pacific nations in uh, new zealand australia canada and most of the european countries and more importantly in the great britain uh, of which united kingdom open university has been there ever since the distance education was consolidated and it has produced a lot of uh, very high quality scholars it has produced very high quality stream material and the uk ou has been one which has been setting standards for open and distance learning and open and distance education in the higher education uh, for other universities to follow so that way uh, we must see that the uh distance education has grown quite phenomenally though as we take uh, as we had taken stock yesterday of the african continent there are still problems but i must say that uh, 
there are uh, very good uh, positive signs also in the african continent because some of the governments are making now real efforts to you know politically uh, support to uh, take the distance education into their policy planning and providing infrastructural support as well as the showing their political will <clears throat> so arti very good morning welcome to this session today good morning sir sir was there class yesterday sorry was there class yesterday yes 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 i think arti you had participated yesterday i remember yes, yes. no no you I joined in very been. late i think he joined in late but you were there but i think you, uh, you interacted also yesterday yeah yes. <laughs> myself and preeti were uh, discussing for the uh, i think there was no class yet. no no i i think you were there online and uh, you were interacting with us i remember <laughs> having you know interacted uh, with you arti day before yesterday was the class but i think yesterday was not there <laughs> <laughs> we have the recording <laughs> uh that's interesting so <laughs> i think with the little one you have been little <laughs> puzzled <laughs> no i i think the little one also joined for a while <laughs> Uh, so, uh, no you were very much there though you said i think uh, i made i, I said that uh, the, so i greeted you and then you said sir i am uh, i joined later because when we discussed uh, the uh, uh, the uh, closing session closing time so then you said i joined little late if you remember clearly no no <laughs> anyway we will uh, will will uh, go ahead so uh, i was saying it, uh, discussing with the ali also we have discussed the assignment yesterday then we discussed assignments also okay so i was not we discussed right. the assignments so no, sir is trying to recap entirely the uh, the four today i am just uh, taking uh, you know stock what we discussed yesterday and in the last four or five days uh, we will take up the session to, uh, today uh, we have uh, the block 5 for today but i thought for 10 15 minutes it is nice that if we you know take uh, re re take a recapitulatory session Uh, because that way we remain in touch what we discussed and repeatedly if we do that then it is more uh, in a registering style so it is a distance educator style to you know discuss things more and more to discuss things repeatedly uh, because it is not conventionally uh, practiced because there once you have a lesson session then it is over but here we try to you know kind of relate and uh, kind of uh, you know take you back to little uh, for the yesterday so that we can continue from what we said if you, this is a strategical part actually if you look at the structure of the units have you noticed the structure of the units yes ha uh, there this is a very interesting beginning there is a uh, the Uh, there is an uh, objectives and then there is introduction have you noticed yes there is objective introduction and then it starts with 1.3 then it starts 1. with 3. the topic yeah, yeah with the topics 1.3 so, then 1.4 yeah so if you just go through any one introduction uh, the introduction begins with what we discussed in the previous units and what we are going to discuss in the current unit so this is a kind of uh, strategy because if we uh, if we do not do that in the distance learning you, you know every student will have his her own uh, uh, constraints so we always try to you know link it with our previous discussion and then move ahead with the current discussion 
so nevertheless uh, we will you know do that so uh, what i was discussing that uh, we had discussed the growth and philosophy of distance education in the last five days four units we completed and uh, on the very first day we just discussed the overall uh, we took an overview of the program so in the block one we discussed uh, basic issues of open and distance education and uh, in this particular uh, block we discussed what is distance education what are various uh, you know uh, forms of distance education that we have and one very important uh, issue that we discussed in this particular block which is the social credibility and justice um, i think you will uh, you will appreciate the, the point which is made in the unit 2 all through the discussion the social credibility and justice this keep uh, this keeps on percolating in the discussion uh, and today's discussion will also focus on this very point social credibility because every distance education practitioner every scholar of distance education has emphasized that the distance education must be relevant must be you know uh, doing justice with the um, with the interest of the uh, citizens of the country and it should make social impact it should work for the upliftment of the society so because if that is not or that is missing in the distance education uh, i think uh, very obviously it is not uh, required but because distance education has been working uh, in multi directionally it has been you know uh, enhancing the or rather taking forward the education it has been working in the for the interest of the women for the interest of the down trodden people it has been opening avenues for higher education it has been democratizing the higher education this is very important role distance education has been playing so i think social credibility is one which is very very important and i i i would uh, expect that there is always a question in the assignment as well as in the term and examination but apart from that also if, uh, because you are student of the masters degree program so <clears throat> i think we should we should very clearly you know understand that what is the role of a distance education then we are talking of, we talked about the new learner in the globalizing era all of us know today the learner is different is a migratory learner it is a very preoccupied learner a technology savvy learner uh, the learner is free agent because he wants to move here and there and you know doesn't want to st- uh, study the way institutions prefers he, he or she would like to study at her or his own pace place style and so forth and media is also uh, the choice of the uh, learner and uh, there are certain other character characters of the new learner in the globalizing era then we came to the philosophical foundations so there we will link today's session with the block 2 because in the block 2 we discussed the philosophy of distance education Uh, what are the foundations upon which distance education has been built uh, so we defined it through the views of certain scholars like uh, von hammer michael moore uh, then uh, certain other uh, scholars we discussed their views what is it? somebody said in this last form of education auto peters somebody says it is a you know uh, uh it's an it's a kind of didactic conversation somebody says it is an independent study somebody says it is an autonomous study and uh, number of other uh, you know uh, concepts were given by the scholars so uh, we you know discussed their views uh, in one unit today we will be discussing some of the the scholars who had given the Uh, foundational statements or rather concepts very early for distance education and then philosophical foundation one and two we you know discuss all those things then uh, we also discuss the operational issues concerns what are the operational concerns 
which have been making you know so what is happening is that society is unfolding very rapidly uh, i think um, uh, if you look back at our own initial educational patterns you will find them they do not exist anymore they all together have changed today even the conventional education is being you know, to a certain degree provided through the online mode and uh, our students are no more you know that we attached or totally focused to the word classroom interactions they are studying through various media and uh, they are very very much aware about uh, what is happening around and uh, what are the resources for education for the knowledge rather i would say and then we discussed the historical perspective in, in in terms of growth and present status of open and distance education so we discussed uh, the indian prospect indian uh, scenario where we had the gurukulas we had the patshalas we had the shruti smriti uh, system of uh, you know, teaching learning and then subsequently we had text and then we had the patshalas gurukulas then madrasas and eventually it gave way to the schools in the colonial era and in the post independence era we you know had our own policies especially dr radha krishnan commission uh, report which in 1948 it was established and by 1949 it gave its report and uh, that uh, you know uh, forms the basis for education in the country which has two three very major initiatives you know major recommendations those were the universalization of education and also education for all and also education uh, was you know included in the constitution as a basic need and uh, the government was uh, the, the was you know made responsible to provide basic education uh, through the universalization of education to every child in the country so it's a right of the child to receive basic education free and without any bias <coughs> uh then uh, yesterday we discussed uh, distance education in south africa so i think this unit needs little um, uh, normal lecture maybe i think somebody will look into it distance education in african continent because we discussed south africa east africa central africa west africa north africa and uh, uh, in, in different countries of the african continent we you know we had we, we discussed uh, how education is uh, making changes what is the scenario what are the challenges what are the you know uh, uh, regional issues because uh, more significantly in the central asian uh, states or other i should say states i am referring to the nations they have political conflict they have instability governments are not stable they have they have separatist groups and you know, and, and there are a lot of issues which are there but in certain states like in egypt like in uh, uh, certain other countries there is uh, stability of government and uh, definitely some institutions are doing marvelous work look at south africa uh, the in the distance education has been making great impact the uh, same is in kenya uh, i mentioned uh, the botswana open institute of this open and distance education uh, same is with uh, in certain other countries where uh, say for example in nigeria uh, the there is open distance education university in nigeria under which there is a specific institute which has been working in nigeria and in other countries at the same time commonwealth of learning i think i mentioned you it has headquarters in vancouver canada it is making great impact in the open and distance learning especially in the african region and the asian region it has been supporting education and we have semca center for education and media in the southeast asia so we have a center in delhi which is looking after the education needs which is supporting certain orientation programs training programs and so forth 
UNDP United Nations development programs have been specifically focused for development or improvement of educational programs and the support has been received to uh, the distance education programs in African continent quite significantly. Dear learners, uh, UNICEF has also been playing a very important role. World Bank has been doing great service to the distance education in the African continent and it has been supporting various you know, educational programs. Similarly, there are regional institutes which have been established. Some of the concerns of the distance education in the Asian, uh, African continent are actually uh, the need for you know producing trade and power. So a lot of training uh, institutions have been established so that the adequate number of teachers are trained. Because if we have the teaching, uh, the trained teachers to look after the distance education, then I think it will work better. So the focus in most of the nations in the African continent is to have the training institutes which would train the uh, teachers for distance education. But uh, in a nutshell, we see a great future, a great prospect for the distance education in the African continent. And it looks forward to, uh, to change the scenario, it, uh, to change the, to, to uh, eliminate the poverty and also work for women and children, especially in the health sector, especially in the, uh, you know, um, uh, the, the maternal health, the child health, as well as agriculture and uh, uh, management of natural resources. So these, uh, the, these were a few points of the discussion that we had in the last four or five days. Uh, now we will you know, go uh, to our uh, today's uh, issue, today's uh, topic, which is growth and innovation. Uh, so we have another our student, uh, good morning. Good morning. Uh, morning, morning. So uh, I think uh, Priti is there, no? Uh, so anyway, we, uh, I would like to just inform that we had just had a recapitulatory session and we uh, took an overview of what we discussed in the last five days. So today being the, the yeah, Aarti. So how I will be getting the recording of yesterday if, if I want? Oh, that will be with the regional center. So you have to request RC. Okay, because I think uh, due to some network issue, I was not able to join. So I missed the session. Oh, but I think you had joined, so uh, your uh, this thing was there all the time. I don't know how it happened. There might have been. Anyway, we'll request mm -hmm. the RC to you know look into your request, and maybe they will come up uh, with uh, some sort of solution, right? Okay. And in case uh, if uh, we have to if. I am joining to to whom I should contact if uh, the network issue is there. How I will be getting confirmation for the same? No, network issue in, in terms of on okay. your end or on our, our, our end? It was from my end, I think. You are saying I was joined, but I was not there. <laughs> I have even I have messaged on the I have messaged to RC1 also yesterday that I have missed I um, due to network issue, I think class was not there. No, you don't have to send to RC1 because it is being coordinated by RC Chandigarh. Okay, I have revert back on the schedule, whatever they have provided now on 17th May. Uh -huh. and, yeah, I revert back on that one only. Okay, so I think uh, this will be the our conversation is being recorded. So uh, I will also request RC Chandigarh to look into your request, right? need that because uh, you know discussion about assignment has been missed there no that's why 
but if you want we can discuss it for a while today before we end the session right okay sir will that be feasible to you yes sir okay we will do that you just remind me 10 minutes before okay thank you sir thank you so much yeah yeah, yeah. we will discuss it again no issue so today uh, we will uh, take up uh, a very important uh, you know issue which is a uh, block 5 and block 5 of uh, mde 411 uh, which is a uh, uh, the, the course is uh, growth and philosophy of distance education and uh, we covered the four in four blocks we covered basic issues of open distance question philosophical foundation growth and present status distance education in south africa i have been emphasizing we discussed actually in fact distance education in the african continent in the entire africa let it be there so now we will move uh, ahead and we will discuss the block 5 i am you know uh, i i thought initially to just uh, give a kind of lecture but then i found because we are not face to face so uh, it, to make more sense to make more relevance and make things easier for you i am going block to block so that you are clear that uh, we are discussing a particular block and uh, the whatever issues or points are there in the block we will take we will we will discuss them i am not teaching in a way everything or every word or every uh, every line or every page we, we are discussing the major uh, con- uh, ma- major or focused points of the particular uh, block or and then in a unit wise scheme so uh, block 5 is quite uh, exhaustive block and it has uh, Well, ten units, because uh, you you might have seen, you must have seen that in the previous uh, four blocks we had like three units, four units, or five units at the most. But in block five we have ten units, so these are in a way are not units. These are ten uh, research papers, which have been contributed by different scholars. Uh, the scholars who have made great impact in the open and distance education so they are in in these uh, such papers they have been talking about the uh, innovations and the growth that distance education has made over the period so uh, we will be discussing some of the papers which uh, uh, in a indicative manner we have discussed in the block 3 also block 2 also but here they are more exhaustively talking about the uh, open and distance education's growth and uh, specifically focusing on the innovations how it has uh, unfolded over the period of time so the very first unit uh, is a, a guided didactic conversation in distance education this is very important and this unit has been this unit uh, rather i should say the research paper has been contributed by bors homework we discussed he is a german scholar and a very celebrated distance education scholar uh, so this is one of the question in assignment also question number 3 <laughs> yes 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 this is one of the question yeah very true yes. so he is talks about the educations and the educated educants and the educandus this is a this is very interesting point that he makes so he says there are educated there is education and there are there are educators and there is education now these three things these two or three things are very important because uh, what he says it is there is a didactic conversation there is a uh, pedagogical communication two way communication so it's a guided it should be guided that means there has to be uh, the as the the uh, student the distance uh, learner cannot be left in large in isolation because in isolation a student cannot continue 
uh, his or her study and uh, may not benefit or may not yield the desired results of the education so this is very important so this is basically uh, 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 guided in a sense that there has to be some sort of uh, indication some sort of uh, guidance from the teacher so it's is essentially talking about the two way communication uh, or uh, or sort of dialogue between the educands and the educanders those who are the teachers those who are the learners so educator uh, and the person to be educated so educands and educanders means the uh, the educator and the person to be educated so that means so now we have been joined by arthi also welcome once yes she made her self visible uh, so uh, so it is the educator and the educated so, uh, so we, because we said, said beginning in the beginning that it is an independent study it is a autonomous study but that doesn't mean the learner is just is, is uh, all the time Uh, at her or her own fate there so there is a teacher the teacher has a role to play to you know uh, to encourage to break the monotony of the learner so in mo- in many cases it has been seen that the students uh, discontinued their studies just for very simple reasons that they couldn't manage their isolated study so so the born homework has been making very uh, emphatic uh, emphatic uh, uh, statements so he feels that there has to be a conversation there has to be a, a educational communication there has to be sort of directions from the teacher to i mean to the student those who are taught and those who are teaching so what it does it does it it builds personal relation even though in distance education the very basic characteristics of the this or the character of distance education is separation we are we it is a separated study we uh, studied we uh, we discussed all along the discussion in the last 5 years that the very basic characteristic of distance education it has you know it is it, there is a distance it is at a distance that means the learner and uh, the teacher are at a distance that is the basic character of the education but that doesn't mean the there is no communication between them so there has to be communication that means there has to be a personal relation that means uh, there, there has to be some sort of link between the two so that the the isolation is broken and the learner is you know promoted or guided rather instead of using the word promoted i would say guided to learn uh, explain the strategies to learn and at uh, points when the learner feels isolated the very uh, importantly the teacher is there to guide and to you know to uh, encourage the learner to move ahead so it is a kind of uh, you know feelings between the learner the learner feels that i am not alone because in the conventional education what is the biggest advantage the student is always at liberty to you know go to the teacher and ask whatever uh, problems are there whatever educational or i mean the pedagogic issues are there he can or she can discuss and get solution to it but so uh, born homework somehow feels that there has to be a teacher remotely of course not face to face there all the time uh, but there has to be a teacher there has to be a personal relation between the teacher and the learner or the those who are taught and those who are teaching and sort of relationship between them must be there and he also feels that uh, the distance education must have the intervention of media because how to make how to establish personal relation how to establish how to give the feelings that there is a teacher for you i mean for the distance learner so there has to be media 
uh, definitely there is a role for media and also there has to be planning uh, uh, homework feels that the distance education should not be thrown without proper planning that means we should see the constraints of the learner we should see the the availability of the resources with the learner and whole lot of uh, preparation has to be there because uh we discussed the characteristics of the learner he is isolated he is at a distance he is he is having lot of other issues maybe in job and like some of you are having family some of you are having uh, you know employment some responsibilities urgent issues family issues then social uh, obligation a whole lot of circumstances are there within which our learners are studying so there has to be uh, consideration for all those issues and there must be room or scope for entertaining such issues in conventional education this doesn't happen if you go to university you know you attend the class you go there you don't go there the teacher will come and deliver the lecture go away nobody is bothered whether you are injured that day in some scooter accident or some family issue was there and you didn't come to the class so he or she has no concerned with that and they will simply mark you absent and then maybe at the end of the semester if you are not uh, fulfilling the attendance criteria you will be debarred from taking the exam uh, but in distance education this is not the case we uh, it is the, all the socio cultural educational and many other concerns of the learners are also appreciated i'm not saying that all the time this is uh, this is to be accepted but in majority there is a lot of flexibility there are a lot of uh, bya uh, provisions so that your know, these concerns are also appreciated and some sort of help to reduce uh, to to continue your study despite all these constraints such provisions are made <clears throat> so uh, that is one point and another point which uh, is very important that uh, there has to be uh, i said the planning planning doesn't mean that institutional planning because distance education is a learner centric so learner centric uh, means we should uh, we have to consider appreciate the concerns of the learner uh, and at the same time there has to be friendly atmosphere So what is friendly atmosphere? Friendly atmosphere means that uh, there is a freedom, there, there is a free flow of information, there is a free flow of conversation. So that is how he says in the beginning, guided didactic conversation. What is the importance of it? It is the importance of it that it keeps the learner active and uh, keeps the learner pursuing the program and uh, at uh, the point of isolation. the learner doesn't leave or escape from the program he can or she continues with it despite the constraints so this is uh, the point and briefly uh, you know uh, uh, if we if we uh, not conclude or summarize the guided didactic conversation idea which is given by uh, born homework in the distance education it focuses on five six points and what these points uh, that uh, the learner uh, is motivated and uh, the learner draws intellectual pleasure this is uh, quite interesting you know the, the learner drives uh, intellectual pleasures from the uh, from the program from the uh, study uh, and uh, reach the favorable attainment so that means Uh, this uh, ends in the fulfillment of the learner in terms of maybe degree in terms of the uh, the intellectual uh, uh, food that he or she receives through the program this is very important so the personal relationship building between the teaching and the learning or the teach or the teaching and learning part is that in teacher and the learner is very very important and at the same time if it is a it is a didactic conversation in and it is guided then whatever instructions are given by the teacher there they are well received by the 
uh, taught uh, that means the student so uh, i think all these activities have to be planned keeping in view the characteristics of the learner and uh, mind you that uh, characteristics characteristics of the learners are not uniformed every learner is a typical case in the distance education i must say some of you are working some of you are uh, non working but having families some of you are uh, student some of you are doing uh, business some of you are teaching in certain education institutions some of you are doing it for just for you know your own pleasure and for your own sake uh, in the industry we have t- students of uh, in 70s and 80s that they are in 70s and 80s so they are also studying so their concerns their characteristics are not similar to those who are presently employed and are thinking to you know move ahead with their education so these are the characteristics of distance educations uh, edu- the educants or the those who are taught so uh, <coughs> so we have to keep so this this is what should be included in the planning mm, so we will uh, move to characteristics of distance education now uh before that i will say what is a good didactic conversation what is good um, guided didactic conversation so that means good didactic uh, uh, conversation guided didactic conversation is uh, it should be very clear it is clear it should make sense and uh, the suggestions that are made they should be relevant we should they should not be you know uh, vague and they have to be very clear and they should be emotionally acceptable to the learner if i talk something which might be very true or uh, stark net truth but uh, then my learner uh, cannot accept it emotionally then that is not uh, good didactic conversation good guided didactic conversation so it it also means a two way communication if i'm not mistaken yeah very very true very true very correct but we are making little more finer points we use the word emotionally right why so if i we use know. the word emotionally it should be acceptable okay <laughs> i see we also use the word uh, intellectually fulfilling okay sir <laughs> so we are making more so how points. how intellectual pleasure is there from uh, the guided didactic conversation only via conversation and there yeah. has been written the it is favorable to the attainment of study goals no that is true so how come hmm. yeah yes yes Com- complete your question how then uh, there will be intellectual pleasure ah uh, so uh, look uh, why we study why do we study to gain knowledge information so, what is knowledge for satisfaction intellectual level uh, in a way uh, because uh, uh, we would like to uh, increase or rather intellectually known to be a better person we should have more uh, higher level of intellect- intellectuality so if we yes. have proper education and we have proper conversation proper pedagogic conversation then you see we feel intellect ultimately what happens with the study we feel intellectually satisfied rather isn't it this uh, pleasure it means satisfaction right pleasure is satisfaction very true very true yes, yes. yeah intellect is uh, intellectual pleasure is satisfaction the higher more you are satisfied the more pleasurable you feel intellectually Mm-hmm. Right. so we are making here very 
very fine points um, that, that's what i said it is not simple it is two way communication that is true that has to be there but bit, within this or uh, between the communication we should see sometimes you know i mentioned one point that uh, if i make a point which might be very true and very correct i feel yes it should be in the interest of the learner but sometimes the learner is not emotionally ready i gave one very uh, uh, some example uh, maybe in the second session uh, once we had a student a lady student who was coming from uh, about 120 kilometers by traveling public transport bus so our uh, counselor didn't allow her to you know join the class because she was late and mind you that she came crying and told that look look uh, i am bringing my father in law to take care of my child traveling so and i was late by 20 minutes and i was not allowed the class so look at that angle how difficult it is i mean systematically we she was refused but uh, i think we have to be considerate to such constraints of the learner so that is what the higher education through distance mode is yeah flexibility is there flexibility is there but at the same time why it is learner centric education what, what do we mean uh, by learner priority priority is given to the learners emotion must say yeah learners circumstances learners needs yeah. so situation so, uh, yeah so sometimes you know there are uh, uh, there, there are circumstances one girl came to us and you know she she told us that sir uh, you have failed me and my engagement has broken now what do you mm-hmm. would do in those circumstances so we assured her that the next time you will be provided a special counseling session appear in the class and uh, you know we had to speak to her uh, family also to her would be family also that do, uh, please do not uh, discourage her this can happen with her and she next time she will definitely pass so you have so to it's do more the of fam- an understanding uh, the mindset of learner so so uh, distance educators are family therapeutic also sometimes so anyway uh, so this is uh, the, the the guided uh, didactic conversation in the distance education how it is important and what impact it makes on distance edu- i mean overall education uh, so we will go to the next uh, uh, next paper which has been there and it is written by rumbal and the, it is about characteristics of distance education so we have been talking about the characteristics of distance education it is education at a distance that is the very basic idea and uh, uh, we know that there is a separation Uh, between the dis- uh, learner and the uh, teacher and uh, at the same time we also know that uh, the distance education uh, is 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 a more organized uh, form of education it is not d- like conventional education because if we look at the conventional education it is uh, the teacher centric education or the uh system centric education but distance education is learner centric education so uh, we we <coughs> have the uh, we have to see it from the organizational point of view how system is organized and this system appreciates the concerns as we are talking right now uh, it 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 is built uh, uh, considering the constraints of the learners that means Uh, the learners uh, have to be sort of surveyed uh, there has to be proper uh, investigation before the system is built for the distance education i would just give you an example you know when we plan for the programs to be offered for distance educator distance education or the students of distance education say for example if it is ma in distance education if we start ma in distance education Uh, or ma uh, the role of media or rather ma in distance edu- in, dis- in distance education media ma in distance education media 
then there has to be proper survey there has to be long discussion there has to be uh, uh, sort of feedback from the media from the teaching community as to what should be included and what is the role of the media and whether we can offer a program which is uh, uh, having a component of media so there are uh, these issues so we look uh, into such issues before we plan and then offer a program so you know the very first character of the distance education is the separation of teacher and learner and then we also see how the system affects the distance education this is very important because in the uh, con in the conventional education we see that uh, the impact of the system is not that much the reason being the students are regularly interacting with the teacher but in distance education if the organizational uh, pattern organizational uh, uh, ability or rather structure is not uh, properly planned the educational organization structure is not properly planned then it can influence adversely influence Uh, i will give you an example say for example if uh, the evaluation system of the distance education is very very different from the conventional education if you see the conventional education has as straight away the term paper and then there are examinations and the examinations are in a way prototype it doesn't allow the learner to uh, bring in the prior knowledge or the linkage or to the Uh, knowledge that the learner already has in maybe uh, due to previous study previous working experience or because we have a uh, large number of learners who are already employed who have adequate educational background so we allow the linkage to the prior learning or recognition of the prior learning so this is not possible in the uh, conventional education because in the conventional education the students come from a certain age group from a certain category from certain background and all of them have clear uh, uh, level uh, whereby they have been evaluated and allowed to uh, sort of take up the program enter into the program but in distance education this is not the case we uh, we may have a student who is 70 years old at the same we might have is get a student who is of 18 years of age or 20 years of age <coughs> so uh, the educational organization makes a big impact on the education of the distance learner the third one is a technical media uh, this is very important point in the conventional mode we do not have much of the role that is the media <clears throat> then a uh, very interesting uh, but uh, maybe we uh, we do not take note of it <coughs> two way communication uh, in classroom situation do you think it is two way communication does it happen mostly one way in lecture method in lecture method but here you don't have the lecture method yeah what you have you have uh, the uh, the assignments you have the discussion forum you have the uh, communication with, uh, with the teacher so whatever you feel you can communicate and then teacher comes back to you so this is a two way uh, traffic two way communication these uh, characteristics makes the distance education uh, distinct and separate and at the same time you know there is a group learning there is a peer learning rather we should use the term peer learning uh, that is very much in the uh, conventional education you might have seen that uh, uh, much of the learning happens in the peer groups and especially if you look at the uh, business education uh, if you see certain other types uh, so courses then uh, much uh, uh, effort is given much emphasis is given on the peer learning uh, especially in the management education so you might have seen that there are groups and uh, the teaching learning takes in the groups so the teacher has very little role there but in distance education this is not possible 
because each learner is distinct and uh, may be having his her own constraints so they uh, are separated they are uh, they they have their own style habit uh, and also priorities for learning so it doesn't happen so i uh, i told maybe day before yesterday that uh, it is like the radio broadcast radio is for one and all so distance education learning is for one and all and while it is for one individual it is for all but in classroom situation this is not the case <clears throat> uh so uh, then uh, there comes another point which is important uh, that is uh, the uh, we use the word in, it is industrial form of education yeah, it is industrial form of teaching learning so we discuss the industrial form of teaching learning uh, very extensively uh, what does that mean that means uh, there is a, a system of uh, Uh, uh providing education there there is a there is a headquarters there are region center there are learning support centers there are uh, then these the study material is produced in a very systematic manner it is produced in a large quantity so uh, every activity is organized and uh, another very important is a division of labor i think you remember division of labor Uh, in conventional education much of the uh, work is done by the teacher so if you if your teacher is doing much of the work he is taking attendance he or she is uh, you know teaching giving lectures he or she is preparing schedules he or she is yeah so distribution of work is there um, i have lot, read this a lot of work yeah. is transferred to the learner okay because the student uh, is uh, responsible for submitting the examination paper form student is responsible for telling the teacher yes these are my constraints student is responsible for his her own progress in conventional mode the teacher can be asked why the 10 students have failed right but in distance education nobody will ask the teacher why the students have failed the students have failed or didn't complete the program because they didn't study so because the teach, student is autonomous na <clears throat> so this is one feature of the industrialized education and uh, that also applies to the student and then uh, of course uh, the, the the learner studies uh, at his or own pace and place so it is a privatized type of learning thing so these are the characteristics of distance education and uh, uh, we if we look at these characteristics it makes very interesting study and these characteristics of distance education uh, are uh, in a way uh, uh, remains at the center of the policy or the planning of distance education and uh, the, the the second part of the whole Uh, story of the whole situation of the characteristics of distance education is all these characteristics makes you know relevance to the distance education why it is needed in the uh, society today because the society uh, is built around individuals and individuals have their own constraints their own uh, sort of uh, circumstances and situations within which you have to provide the education so within these characteristics you have to plan and yet make the education relevant to the society so in a way if we consider these constraints of the characteristics of the distance education i mean distance educator eventually become the characteristics of distance education so they makes this distance education socially relevant or socially uh, validated to the society so this is the validation of the distance education what we discussed in the block 2 uh, why the uh, distance education has a role in the society and it ultimately proves that there is a need for distance education in the society <clears throat> so this is what we have uh, actually the idea that is discussed in the uh, unit 2 which is uh, 
uh, Rumble's unit, and the, uh, this research paper was uh, in, submitted. Characteristics of distance education. Uh, I think uh, the uh, next paper is distance education in the third world: critical analysis on the promise and reality. So, what is the promise and reality that were made for the distance education? This is uh, Jeff Fargus' paper, and this uh, paper looks after the. Issues that are related to the methodology, methodology of distance education. Uh, what do we mean by methodology? This is a this this this, this is a basically uh, International Council of Distance Education initiative, and uh, International Council for uh, Distance Education uh, had uh, uh, suggested certain. Uh, approaches to the distance education. So, what are the distance education? Uh, International Council for Distance Education. Uh, this uh, body was actually set up in late mid 80s, I think. And excuse me, sir. So, what is third world? What is third world? It is written. It is clear from the literature that distance education promises to assist national development. Huh. Particularly in the third world, what is this third world? <laughs> Basically, the term was used for the developing nations. Achha. Because uh, uh, underdeveloped, we we do not use the word underdeveloped underdeveloped nations anymore. But uh, let mm. me just uh, explain it that in 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 eighties, seventies, and eighties, we used different terminologies. Okay. Today we are using the developed nations and uh, developing nations and underdeveloped nations. Mm -hmm. So in the mid 80s, in mid 70s, we had the third world countries. That means the countries which are uh, not, uh, which 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 are not developing nations. So those were underdeveloped nations. Okay. So India was also in this category for a certain time, and this actually takes into the most of the nations in the African continent, and some some uh, some nations in the Asian continents also, because uh, by 80s maybe till 90s, we had uh, almost uh, two more than two thirds of nations which were considered as underdeveloped. So those were referred to as the third world countries. So third world means developed nations, developing nations, and the underdeveloped nations. So today the underdeveloped the criteria is not applied anymore. So today we have only two uh, categories of nations: developed, developed and developing, and developing nations. So that we don't use the word is little. Uh, that were not very appropriately planned, but because it was the paper was contributed in my, uh, quite uh, back, so the term was used. So, <clears throat> so there are a lot of uh, studies by Hans Kivans and uh, many other scholars. Uh, so they suggested uh, certain models. Like uh, uh, the, initially, it was felt that uh, the distance education. Uh, should be such that the the uh, the the quantity means the availability of the programs, or in a way, we should be able to cater to the needs of the large population of the third world countries. So, if you look at the uh, the, the quantity issue, then uh, the greater part, the greater body of the population was living in the third world countries. And uh, we all know that if you look at the U United States of America, Canada, uh, or other uh, Australia or Europe, there are very uh, few people that lives in these countries, and much of the population that because that includes China also. And we will come to because there is a special focus on China and its educational sector, which is dominated by the. Uh, distance education quite a lot. 
so uh, we, there was a lot of promise that were made to the third world countries that their interests will be taken care so uh, but the problem was that to teach such a large <clears throat> population is not easy and obviously there will be constraints there will be issues that uh, of the quality there will be issues of the cost so so the international uh, council of distance education uh, uh, pondered over these issues and it was felt that we must have a system which can cater to the quantity but there uh, it takes care of the quality and it has to be cost effective also so if you remember that uh, the uh, the birth of indira gandhi national open university is the result of this initiative in 1985 with the act of parliament we had the, the igno established and igno was actually given the responsibility right from the beginning to uh, to you know develop uh, programs academic programs uh, in the field of higher education uh, perhaps Uh, not specifically higher education in the beginning but uh, education that must be made available to the tertiary level uh, the students who are requiring the post secondary education uh, so uh, if you look at the initial initiatives of indira gandhi national university there were certain programs which were of the tertiary level so that they could build skills they could make the large population oriented into taking the employment and contributing to the growth of the countries but uh, there was a problem and the cost issue was there it was the distance education is not actually uh, a very uh, uh, it requires lot of finances you will remember that to produce one book it cost about 80 to 90000 rupees to produce one book in the distance education which is one block rather i will be saying which is having five units or six units or eight units it cost more than 90 to 1 uh, lakhs to produce one book and recently the the cost has gone much higher so if you if a graduate student in one semester is getting say for 20 25 books that means a student is getting more than uh, 2000 to 3000s material in terms of books itself and then the remaining costs that is to offer the counseling sessions that is to conduct the examinations that is to offer the student support services Uh, to to manage the admissions and conduct various other activities that will be extra cost so this was there <clears throat> so these uh, uh, these were issues of promise but in reality it was very difficult to implement them into reality so there had to be a methodology so the international council for distance education developed the model how to develop the study material how to develop the institutions Uh, how to develop the uh, material which is of uh, good uh, quality which is which can uh, deliver the academic contents maybe uh, suiting to the needs of the learners but at the same time it remains cost effective so how that will be cost effective that was a very difficult uh, issue because it was a new idea uh, uh, the material had to be produced The, the money has to be paid to the contributors it had to be properly edited then it had to be properly printed and circulated i mean uh, circulation itself was a challenge for quite some time so then there were certain international agencies which came forward like unesco had a lot of discussion with the countries member countries uh, call worked uh, towards the quality of this study material and i think if you remember uh, united o- kingdom open university was first you uh, know declared the institute having the excellent study material and then the certificate of excellence was also given to indira gandhi national open university 
are producing excellent study material. So this was actually <clears throat> uh, the result uh, or the, the the mandate of the ICD, which was given to you know to produce the quality study material. So in a way, we can say there were a lot of uh, lot of uh, promises made from the uh, distance education and. Uh, uh, to some extent, as far as the study material was concerned, IGNU promised, fulfilled those promises. And uh, it had also uh, eventually developed a system whereby uh, a model was uh, developed, whereby a cost-effective material could be produced. So this we have to see. And uh, some reality in action is seen. That means uh, IGNU was able to establish the quality parameters and it was able to meet the requirements because we discussed the issue of quantity. If you enroll, say, for example, 8 to 10 lakhs of students in one semester, then how to deliver quality material to them? But university has been able to do that. So we can say uh, the model is there, the promise is fulfilled. But uh, at the same time, uh, the universities, uh, open universities, UK, OU, uh, Vancouver in Canada, another university in New Zealand, Athabaka University in Australia, Adelaide, there's another university, open university. They are social mandate also. So they had to fulfill the social mandate of national development. So you have to come to the uh, responsibility point when you are also not only imparting education, but you are also uh, working for the national development of the respective countries. So uh, there were a lot of promises from the distance education. Of course, it has been able to fulfill some of them. May not be all the promises have been fulfilled, but I must say the, the issue of quantity, that means uh, gateway to the large population which is eligible for higher education uh, that uh, pro access has been there the students are able to take admission maybe if they are sincere they are able to complete their education and also they are able to complete their education by uh, studying the quality study material and uh, if you see a lot of our uh, uh, young generation which which has received education from IGNO has contributed socially and economically to the growth of the nation. A lot of employment has been provided to the youths through, uh, through education which they received through the distance mode. So I think uh, we have to see that uh, the promises, the, the, the uh, social needs have been uh, fulfilled, have been met by the distance education, especially because if you look at the European scenario or the United States scenario, you don't require there that way the distance education because their uh, conventional education sets, setup is so strong, so reasonable, so um, uh, very easily available to the citizens of those nations. The, their concern is much less to the distance education. But the third world countries, because India included in the third world countries at a time when this research paper was prepared. So India had a uh, very big challenge. That is how Indira Gandhi National Open University was mooted and established in 1985. So we should take uh, Idino as maybe one example. Then they have another example, Papua New Guinea, but you see, uh, that is a very small country and their issues were different. We have taken the case study from Malaysia also. So they, these nations also have their issues in some small countries like Thailand. Uh, <coughs> their, uh, the, their concerns for the distance education are also uh, very significant, but not to the level of uh, India. Uh, because uh, it is believed that today we have already uh, more than 4 million students. So look at the large number of students that the you know, have uh, presently. And uh, maybe to deliver quality education, 
cost effective education has been challenged and if you critically analyze analyze the 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 uh, working the then you can find out that to a great extent the promises have been met uh, they have been delivered so uh, in reality there is a gain there is a uh, fulfillment of the promise <clears throat> uh <clears throat> there there has been a discussion you know always uh, we will come to unit 7 where we'll talk about the mega universities so china has been working very uh, vigorously to the distance education and we discussed the other day also like uh, sent uh, central radio television university china central radio television ccr tv u ccr tv u has been working in different uh, provinces of uh, china and it has uh, uh, universities in the different provinces those are affiliated to the central china radio television university so if you look at the china's distance higher education all overall china's higher education scenario uh, you will uh, see that uh, there is a very important and uh, a big role that is played by the distance education so the research paper which has been contributed by uh, zingfu dian is uh, one which is focusing on the contribution of uh, distance education in the chinese higher education so uh, the chinese higher education through distance education uh, has a uh, has four systems and what are those four systems basically these are the structures it is a uh, four there are four structures of distance higher education in china uh, basically these are all television universities radio and television university but i think i learned just a few months back that uh, they have now uh, rather uh, started to give more preference to the television universities and uh, uh, radio universities have been a little discouraged so what are the four systems these four systems of uh, chinese higher distance educations so these these systems are the higher correspondence education uh, then they have the radio and tv university education but these are four systems of uh, the uh, planning level when they are executed or uh, practically implemented then they have the uh, radio television university in the central university and the provisional universities which are affiliated they are quite uh, good numbers then they have satellite tv teacher training program and also the state administer examination for independent study so if you look at the indian uh, focus of the uh, distance higher education it is uh, uh, quite uh, opposite to the chinese they have also separate uh, system for teacher education we do offer uh, teacher education to, for the bed uh, program for our uh, students but in a way it is not separately established institute which offers it is part of the education and uh, programs that the university offers and uh, uh, at the same time uh, there is a uh, system uh, within indira gandhi national open university which uh, offers avenues for uh, students to uh, go for the public service examinations like upsc and state pscs recently a center has been established in ignu uh, headquarter new delhi and uh, the students can undertake uh, a sort of entrance exam and if they successfully qualify that they are given free training free coaching so if we look at the fourth pillar of the chinese uh, or fourth system of the china chinese higher distance education so maybe 
igno has also in a way initiated uh, kind of a, a program to offer uh, to offer the trainings to the to to those students who want to go for the public service examinations or civil service examinations but uh, i think we don't have a separate system separate, or the distinct institutional arrangement for the uh, students like they have in a way uh, their correspondence education is separately managed radio and television industries education is separately managed and uh, the satellite tv teachers training program so because the, the population at a certain time point of time was much uh, large in china as comparing to india though it uh, should be say fortunately or unfortunately india has crossed over to the china now in terms of population so our concerns are also becoming more and more vivid uh, to work for the teachers education maybe independently but uh, looking at the teachers education in the country uh, uh, presently the emphasis is not much on training as it was maybe in the last decade or uh, last to last decade so i remember in around 2000 when uh, we offered the bed program uh, we had about uh, 5000 seats and we used to receive 2 lakhs applications then we had the written examination for the uh, candidates to uh, do <coughs> admissions on the merit base it is not there in china china has uh, uh, opened up the educa- teachers education and a separate tv teachers training university has been established so that means anybody any teacher who is already teaching or would like to become a teacher he or she can enroll because the education had, was planned to be distributed through satellite tv so channel. they do they do have open library system also no they they have open library system also which is uh, mm-hmm. actually uh, what many books are there it is all managed by the technology yeah but Uh, igno also has a central library system but it is not accessible to the it is accessible only to the students of uh, mm-hmm. phd program yeah those who are research students they are uh, made they have been offered this facility yeah uh, you have raised a question which uh, pains me a little bit because around 2000 around uh, To, uh, first decade of uh, the this uh, century we had libraries in all the region centers very big mm-hmm. libraries and those mm-hmm. libraries were accessible so uh, again a system is being developed that uh, whereby uh, all our uh, study the study material as well as the references or reference books or the books have been digitized and i am sure uh, very shortly the they will be available to the students so uh, uh, this uh, chinese higher education distance higher education which is based on these four uh, levels is is one such example where why the education can be in real terms democratized and they have come up with a very big network Uh, of uh, ccr tvs so ccr tvs is a central university and it has state uh, or provincial universities which are red uh, television universities so uh, so what is happening is that uh, it is working at the um, macro level uh, then the medium level and the, the macro level so you have at the micro level there is a national system the central ccr tv the central uh, Ch- uh, chinese radio and television industry which is a, at the uh, micro level so it is basically providing the whole planning it is providing the basic uh, idea to the education it is uh, 
sort of planning unit and then you have the the industries and organizations which are at the regional or at the provincial levels and then uh, uh, you have the system which is at the operational level micro, micro level that means the actual universities which are uh, distributing the education so these are sub systems uh, of the uh, main system which is working at the macro level as the national level so maybe uh, you could go through and uh, then uh, through study till then you will find the huge number of uh, regional universities which are working in consonance with the planning which is there at the uh, micro level at the national level and all this is done by the ccrt so uh, it is still called the correspondence education but uh, it has the element of uh, the two way communication because the, the the chinese have built a very strong uh, television and radio base for the delivery of the programs and one thing is that they are also taking care of uh, the uh, school education through the this network even though it is coming to the higher education but because they would like to strengthen the teachers ed- education programs and a lot of emphasis on the teacher education so some schools are also part of this program maybe as a work center or maybe as a uh, action research center Uh, so these schools are also within the group uh, for the teachers training program to act as a, as a work center or most likely i think these, these are there for the uh, action research how do the teachers training program are uh, being delivered how effective they are and so forth so i think we can um, uh, maybe for a broader reading you can go through the uh, the the research paper it's a more of a research paper uh, there a lot of uh, data uh, like uh, they have the crt views that is uh, the central radio television industries then they have prt views as i mentioned to you these are the provisional radio television universities Uh, so the very uh, interesting part is that uh, uh, radio and tv works in consonance with the uh, for the for, for providing the teachers education but if you look at the our scenario i think you are aware of the gyanwani programs mm. as summary then we have the gyan darshan program <laughs> have you seen the gyanwani i mean listen to gyanwani or uh, seen the gyanwani gyan darshan not listen yet but uh, we are familiar you are familiar so you see we have lot of gyanwani programs and those are uh, yeah. broadcast uh, uh, on tv no 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 we have gyanwani programs specifically for radio for radio okay No, I have seen one on TV also. I don't know. We have more than forty radio stations. Interestingly, okay. so mm-hmm. all these radio stations broadcast from eight to twelve hours a day, mm-hmm. and a lot of they do have they do have uh, you know some material from our course also from MED. Yeah, 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 yeah. More. Uh, 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 all the broadcast is relating to the academic programs that the university offers okay. and during the day time from say for example uh, uh, 11 to uh, 4 or 5 there will be at least 3 to 4 hours live broadcast okay. and at the same time we have the gyanwani gyan darshan programs and uh, every day there are 3 to 4 sessions of gyan darshan's live program and this channel is 24 hours uh, live uh, broadcast gyan darshan and it only uh, uh, telecast the educational programs and so and it has the gyan darshan channel uh, broadcast the programs which have been developed by 
certain other organizations also like ncert iits and so forth so uh, various other institutions also contribute but a major part of the programs belongs to igno programs and those have been produced by igno and broadcast on this gyan darshan channel and for radio for uh, other programs the radio broadcasts are there uh, about uh, i think 6 to 8 hours programs are live and uh, another 6 to 8 program is a repeat broadcast on the radio so we have gyan vani and gyan darshan but let me just uh, tell you that it is not it is not it is built as a complementary uh, component of the existing program delivery mechanism but, but exclusively you cannot you know continue i mean you cannot follow a program from radio or gyan darshan or gyan vani exclusively these are complementary to the existing support learner support system so there are also some programs are quite useful and students have been listening to they have been uh they have been they are supplied the schedules and they part sometimes there are special sessions which are uh, teleconferencing sessions whereby the learners will be there on one end and they can uh, talk directly to the presenter to the speaker to the uh, person who is conducting the session or who is the expert there in the studios we have uh, you know has its own studios it works from madan gadi so there is a, a, a good part of it but not like china because they have specifically established radio and television industry the entire education system is controlled or planned and delivered by the uh, setup uh, which is uh, designated as university but indira gandhi open university offers as a complimentary broadcast on radio and uh, through its gyan vani and uh, certain uh, uh, television programs from the gyan darshan channel so it is 24 hour channel gyan darshan channel so uh, then open and distance education as social practice i think uh, we have already discussed uh, quite a lot so uh, we all know that but very uh, it has a few points to my taste rather and these are the points which are uh, not discussed uh, we discussed the social relevance or socially uh, validation of the this uh, distance language it has language issue and uh, yeah. we didn't consider anywhere the language issue uh, what is the problem with the language what it should be like and uh, what role the language plays in education uh, what impact it uh, makes on the education whether the language but i will come as little clarification on this what how uh, the language Uh, makes uh, the learning process uh, simpler or rather enjoyable uh, social action language of this situation this is also very important phenomena and then communication discourse language in social action uh, my basic subject is along with distance education is the linguistics so this was of my taste uh, so Uh, we all know that uh, language as social practice this is a very so- phenomena of the language we all know that in different situations you know, the language plays very different uh, role and uh, mm, it's a, a critical field literacy this is a very technically coded word critical field literacy so in the uh teaching learning program if we would like to you know make our population literate then the language has a central role to play in it but uh, indira gandhi national open university has a language unit which looks after the language of the courses of the study material uh so uh, if you look at the 
the, the communication the requirement of the communication then prime requirement of the communication uh, focuses on the pattern of the language how uh, the what type of what pattern of the language should be there in our communication uh, if we use harsh language if we use uh, not very refined language very literary language uh, very uh, uh, technical language it is very difficult to communicate with the learners so if you look at the language of uh, our study material it's a typical typical style it is not very uh, liter uh, literary type language it is not very that way very simple it is general it yeah, is it general, general it, uh, easy to understand easy to understand so this is a very uh, so, uh, yeah. so it is it is believed that there is a teacher in the language inbuilt teacher so why we have inbuilt teacher mm -hmm. that means we are great getting to the needs of the distance learner and uh, uh, there must be some uh, in, uh, sort of uh, impression that your your study material is talking to you so the technically we say our study material talks to the learner so that way there is a teacher in the study material itself so we all know that uh, uh the language uh, has a greater uh, part in the uh, communication process if the language is simpler straight uh, without jargons uh, using uh, but at the same time it has to be you know subject uh, focused if we are talking about the uh, physics it has to be it it has to have the technical terms the terms which deals with the natural phenomena uh, data statistics and so forth it has to be there but it has to be very clear simple clear and easy to understand and at the same time very straight it cannot be very literary all the time of course it is if you look at the humanities social sciences there is a different uh, uh, style is adopted but then i'm i i'm just informing you that uh, uh, you know has a language unit or all the units are uh, they go through the language editing language editing general editing is different content editing is there they also undergoes the language editing where the expert or the faculty which is dedicated for the language unit ensures that uh, the language is such that is communicable that is uh, that is respectful that uh, deals with the topic adequately and also uh, the language uh, is acceptable in the social term so the word social action language the social action language is the uh, whether the language is able to uh, meet the expect the expected uh, uh, the expected uh, assignments that it had to fulfill in the society because if we have study material if we have program it has to uh, discharge a certain role in the society we cannot have a language which is not able to execute or which is not able to meet its role which it has been assigned to work for the uh, benefit of the society say for example i will give you one example uh, the the language of the programs which are focused at the women and the child development there a specific style of the language is adopted if you go for the sociology programs then uh, the behavioral science terms are used we will come in the next discussion uh, the next uh, course which is uh, mde 412 the instructional design there we have a different type of language which deals with the behavioral science which deals with the phenomena of education and uh, which deals with the role of communication in the 
uh, in the instructional design then we have a different language style and here also itself you see the some of the research articles have different language but whereas the units which have been contributed by igno the language is different these units which are based on the research papers the language is very very difficult it is very condensed uh, and it is quite different from the language which is used in many many units so there is a social action the language has a social action role also of the situation what is the situation that means in certain situations say for example the classroom uh, situation we use different language to meet with the social action in the classroom situation so there is a dialogic way or maybe there is an instructional methodology there is explanatory methodology of the language and so forth so it is a situational impact on the education then we uh, we will uh, we have a word discourse are you aware the word discourse discourse is a specific term uh, which is used for uh, for, uh, uh, for for certain statements which are made in some specific Uh, for a specific purpose so say for example we we always call we are having discourse that means we are discussing you know certain issue where we have certain basic concepts and we are you know divulging uh, those issues we are un- we are uh, sort of uh, 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 we are unfolding the layers of uh, the concepts which is in a way otherwise uh, it, it remains you know under a lot of layers so we discuss it and then we put a point of view across one another so that is discourse so discourse hindi mein jisko hum kehte hain na vimarsh what is vimarsh vimarsh is to discuss a certain concept from various point of view from various angle so uh, this discourse of right vichar vimarsh sorry to so, vichar vimarsh jo bolta vimarsh vichar vimarsh that remarked vichar <laughs> vichar bhi theek hai lekin jo actually word hai wo vimarsh hai ha wo ek sath hi use karte hai na word vichar vimarsh karke batayenge vimarsh जो एक्चुअल वर्ड है डिस्कोर्स के लिए दैट इज विमर्श विचार इट सेल्फ इज ए वी कैन से लाइक पॉन्डरिंग अपॉन सम आइडिया दैट इज विचार तो विचार कैन बी इंडिविजुअल आई कैन डू विचार इन माय ओन वे बट आई कैन नॉट डू विमर्श विमर्श हैज टू बी बेस्ड ऑन सम इनपुट सम बाय द बाय अनदर पर्सन बाय अनदर आइडिया so uh, so this discursal feature is very very important feature of the language which uh, which gives way to uh, to unfold with the uh, idea having lot of incoming views to it so open and distance education as a social practice what is social practice you see there are two parts open and distance education that is one as a social practice when we talk about ode in the in terms of social practice then there has to be lot of uh, mutual mutual inputs to a particular notion right if there is an idea about uh, society then the idea cannot be uh, of one individual because then it doesn't form the a societal idea it forms in the individual's idea so if it has to be so, so social idea or societal idea there has to be lot of uh, ideas which belongs to different people who are member of the society and then discussion over that idea is the discourse so this is a basically this is a literary uh, phenomena the discursal feature of the language then language in social action i think 
Do you get language in the social action? Yes. So what is lexical item? Mention on page number fifty-nine. Uh, lexical. L e x i c a l. Lexical. What, what that means? Lexical yeah. is that belongs to language. Language. Yeah. Language of terminologies. Terms used, no? Ha, huh, no. Lexi. The lexical is that belongs to the lex lexis. Lexis is basically the sentence, right? And uh, uh, all uh, the 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 number of units when they are in uh, sequence, then uh, that become the, their sense is the lexical sense. So that that means the sense of language. So language in social action is a phenomena. That means uh, when uh, when activities are happening. Then there is a different form of education, a form of language that we come across, describing the uh, the the action in happening, language of the action in happening. Uh, have you are you aware of the word action research? Action research is like you know when there is a class going on. and you monitor the response of the students to the class or to the transaction that is happening in the class so when action is in motion or in practice and when that practice is uh, described by uh, the language so that forms the uh, language in social action so so we are talking about not the classroom action uh, which is action research is primarily applied to classroom uh, activities but when there are social activities means uh, whatever happens in the society well, to, let us come to the term more simply in a simpler form means when uh, whatever activities takes place in this society and when they are described as if are happening in the society like um what we do is it is a part of a discourse when a discourse happens that means it is a social action so when we describe that discourse so that discursal language is the uh, language which is in social action there are activities happening and uh, at the same time they are being described so what type of language we should have it's specifically prescribing the type of language that we must have in the in the uh, distance education this is one form of language which is language in social action we cannot use a very rigid language very derogatory language very high end language we should use the language which is social action which is able to describe in simpler form so the 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 world as it is going on so the world as it is working is to be described in a language and in a language which should be understandable to other uh, students or other members of the uh, group which is cooperating which is collaborating in the discourse so the unit 6 is written by one of our senior professors who is the r ramanujam he retired as pro vice chancellor and he talks about the distance education in developing countries prospectus and challenges so i think uh, this uh, is quite simple and he has written it in the unit style so it is definitely uh, i will focus uh, slightly on the mega universities because this is a new concept of virtual universities and knowledge media we will focus on it have you have you heard the word mega universities mm -hmm. 
you must have heard the word mega mega malls we use the word mega to describe certain uh, phenomena which go which grows beyond the point so this has happened with the universities also like uh, uh, ccr tv china central radio and television university can you imagine how many students it enrolls some idea no it enrolls about 5 crore plus 500 million students so how can a university enroll so many students this is a, a challenge similarly indira gandhi national university enrolls around 4 million students it says that there are about 4 million students in its polls united kingdom open university says it has more than uh, uh, 3 lakhs or some students with it but you have universities which have 8000 students 10000 students 20000 students so if you take delhi university maybe it has 1 lakh student or 2 lakh students so when the system grows beyond the beyond, beyond its proportion for which it was established so those are actually mega universities and there are three mega universities and uh, i i, I uh, discussed with you the views expressed by john daniel he was the vice chancellor of uh, ukoeu and uh, the ceo and the president of commonwealth of learning now what he says what is open what is mega university mega university is the university which is in a real term an open university and what is open university he talks he describes open university he doesn't uses too many jargons he has simple statement to make he says open university is that where which is open to more people more and more people so in a way you can say open university is one such institute which has no uh, restriction to the students they can enter into any number into a certain program so that becomes an open university but if you put a restriction that we will take only these number many of students that is not open university mm-hmm. are you aware of the delhi university school uh, sol yes sir so what is the state of sol school of open learning is there yeah so what in school of open learning also school you have open learning yeah. <coughs> sol also you, you do have some criteria for admission Exactly. Yeah, certain criteria are there for admission. Yes, yes. Not right. everyone can take admission over there. Yeah, 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 very true. Especially like if you go want to go for English honors or commerce, uh, they have very strict criteria. Yeah. And uh, I remember that for English honors, you have to have ninety two. Ninety-five percent score mm, plus two. Yeah. Eligibility criteria. Very rigid mm-hmm. criteria for commerce. They have almost same criteria as that of for the uh, regular BCom or uh, BA economics or whatever it is. So, can you call that open education in real terms? It cannot be, na. because it is not open to each and everybody huh? it is not open to each and every learner who aspires to become yeah. graduate in commerce from sol 
<coughs> so i just wanted to this point i just wanted to make this point and john daniel has a point here it is open to more and more people that means it is it is open uh, education only when it is in real terms open that anybody who fulfills yes the baseline criteria if you are going for the honors program you must be plus 2 that is a com- normal standard but then on entrance basis it doesn't put any restriction so if that kind of system is there it means you are part of the mega university so uh, that is there and mega universities have their role and uh, uh, question is there for the mega universities mega system that is can distance learning be any good this question has been always there and uh, asked lot of time uh, and i would like to take it in different uh, perspective you see we have a traditional notion of quality in higher education right what do we expect from higher education it should render you able for the employment right what we expect from the higher education it should make you eligible for the employment that means the moment you complete it you should be absorbed and you should be an employed person but that doesn't happen with the distance education all the time so what uh, an ordinary person asks from the university he or she asks that if my children or myself we uh, get educated through the university whether it is conventional or higher education from Uh, distance mode i should or my child should be able to get employment but that doesn't happen with the distance education all the time conventional mode it is expected that yes they will be employed sooner or later but uh, uh, it definitely doesn't happen with the distance education because distance education is for many reasons not always for the employment is a major focus of course but at the same time it is for obtaining education furthering education getting a respectable position in the society getting awareness and so forth so uh, what happens uh, from the higher education that is through distance mode sometimes a question is asked and then we put the question you know of validation of uh, its accreditation sometimes we call whether it is recognized or not recognized you know we ask this question so this is always there with the mega universities whatever whether it is simple open university or mega university the question is always there then we also expect that any institute of higher education should be very very vibrant <clears throat> can we why can it be vibrant it cannot be because the students are not with the university they are away then it must have a face to face contact with the student that is also not possible then third one is there is a um, uh, availability of the resources in uh, adequate availability of the resources that is also not there so these three uh, uh, factors sometimes compels us to question whether distance learning is any good learning or not so then we have to look upon the role which is being played by the conventional education and the role which is played by the distance education we always know where conventional higher education has not been able to serve the interests distance education has always come there and served the purpose so it has proved to be a social it has proved to be a tool for the social uplift, upliftment raising the standards of education furthering the education and doing lot more because it has its own system of quality and quantity it has its specific Uh, uh, look at the course design of the study material it is very different it is very very 
technical it has objectives it has assessment it has the main theme thematic discussion and uh, it also has the outcomes from the course so if we look at all aspects we can say is equally better mode of education and uh, we can definitely say that it has met the quality uh, that is there and it says for the distance learning so and at the same time it has also worked as a, uh, a major factor for the knowledge needed it has been able to bring about knowledge from various sectors put it in the system and uh, provide it to the learners so we have provided high quality study material uh, the university or the distance education system has provided very high quality material it has provided uh, also uh, adequate uh, uh, adequately managed support systems for the learners uh, then it has also there is a provision for research and eventually it is on the way of uh, uh, building the uh, digital universities or the virtual universities i think very shortly we have one virtual university in nadu we are having very shortly one at the capital also so uh, the mega universities with their concepts are working quite uh, effectively they have been contributed to the uh, social wow. upliftment through the quality study material support mechanism and various other uh, arrangements that are there in the though we all know that traditional notion of quality higher education is different but at the same time it has been able to promote and provide access to its open educational policies systems and arrangements so i think the last uh, small discussion is on the maybe 5 to 7 minutes that is on the <clears throat> discipline of distance education it's not very complex um, issue uh, we all know discipline means an area of study or an area of interest of academic study we have different disciplines we have education as a discipline we have social science as a discipline computer science as a discipline so uh, distance education being in the uh, mainstream of discussion an area which has lot of scope for research an area which has social relevance lot of interest is shown by the people there is a lot of scope uh, there are lot of issues which are which need to be researched where scholars have interest where debates are there so it automatically makes it a uh, subject for uh, being declared as a discipline i am sure distance education is likely to be a very important discipline very important area of study where lot of interest is there where lot of scope is there for research so uh, definitely distance education is a very fit and suitable subject for being a discipline i think you understand the word discipline anushasan anushasan so anushasan ka arth yahi hua ki aisa vishay jiska daira vyapak ho jisme logon ki ruchi ho jisme बहुत सारे मुद्दे हो जिन पर चर्चा की जा सके जो समाज को उपयोगी लगे और जिसमें शोध करने के लिए जिसमें बहुत सारे ऐसे विषय हो जिन पर गुंजाइश हो तो वो अनुशासन हो सकता है वो एक डिसिप्लिन हो सकता है तो आई एम वेरी कन्विंस्ड डिस्टेंस एजुकेशन इज अ फिट सब्जेक्ट फॉर Uh, being a discipline and definitely it is a it is a discipline and it needs to grow uh, independently not as part of educational programs there should be separate disciplines in each and every institute for the distance education not only directorate and not only 
center but it has to be a proper department of distance education and then perhaps it will be uh, contributing more effectively we have that kind of arrangement so with that uh, we will conclude the mde 411 and maybe there is an inquiry we can attend couple of queries कुछ आपकी फीडबैक हो कुछ विषय आपने शायद असाइनमेंट के बारे में कहा था कि थोड़ा सा आप चर्चा करना चाहते हैं ना यस सर हाँ तो कल हमने असाइनमेंट्स के बारे में बहुत ही लिमिटेड uh, डिस्कशन की थी तो मैं असाइनमेंट्स के बारे में यही दो ही चीजें कहूंगा एक तो ये है कि उसका जो पहला पेज है असाइनमेंट के बुकलेट का उसको आप पढ़ लीजिए उसमें सबमिशन के बारे में आपको बताया है कि कहाँ सबमिट करेंगे और कैसे करेंगे और दूसरा जो मेरा जो एक तरह से जो एकेडमिक इनपुट्स असाइनमेंट्स पे था तो पहले तो आपको ये ध्यान में रखना चाहिए यू हैव टू रिमेम्बर दैट फुल स्कोर इन असाइनमेंट इज मैंडेटरी you have to obtain a pass score both in the assignments as well as term and examination separately to ye important hai isko you cannot say ki term and examination will have better grade so there is no need to pass the assignments so you have to submit the assignments in a way that it fetches a satisfactory score which is worthy to be declared you as a as pass in that particular component that was one secondly it has to be completed in a systematic manner and thirdly the questions jo uske questions hain they are planned in such a way that uh, uh, that uh, basically assignments is to monitor your progress you know it is part of the continuous uh, monitoring process of the learner <clears throat> कि लर्नर क्या कर रहा है कितना गेन कर रहा है कितना पढ़ रहा है कितना अचीवमेंट है और वेदर हीज अचीवमेंट और अंडरस्टैंडिंग ऑफ दिस सब्जेक्ट इज इन एडिकुएट और एडिकुएट ये भी डिसाइड आपके असाइनमेंट्स के अटेम्प्ट से ही होता है तो आपको असाइनमेंट्स जो है वो uh, अपने पूरे कोर्स मटीरियल को पढ़ के ही बनाना पड़ेगा बिकॉज द क्वेश्चन आर प्लान इन सच ए मैनर that you will not find their answers at one yeah. right so you you have uh, uh, found that you have seen that yeah all these three questions are part of this 411 whatever <laughs> we have did you know you have to study almost uh, entire study material and then find out the answers right entire yeah Because, because it is yeah, these yeah. questions are divided into uh, parts, so each part will uh, uh, go to a different block or different section. Then you have to mark one uh, uh, sections. Then you have to go and mark another sections. And very importantly, you just do not write what is written on the. study material and then present it as it is because that is it's mm-hmm. that uh, will not be the uh, proper uh, attempt or, or and one more thing i keep on forgetting this uh, your main question is asked to be uh, attempted in 800 words right yeah so please do not go on writing 3000 words because you will write 3000 words only when you just copy the study material so what you can do you can write maybe mm-hmm. 900 words or you can also write 750 words it is not that uh, you should stop at 800 words and mm-hmm. even do not add a line of conclusion beyond that but it also does not mean that you write it in 2000 words or 3000 words so what it means is that you study you understand and then write the whole thing in your own words uh, bringing uh, down to the size that is marked there on the question questionnaire 
that is very important that you must keep in mind because uh, i have seen assignments which are supposed to be written in 700 words and the the learners have written them in 4000 words 5000 words almost entire unit has been copied so please do not do that because that will not be appreciated and perhaps it might not bring you the uh, required score just these things are there rest of questions i think you already have gone through and uh, we have we are going through the study material also so as and when the questions that are there in the assignments comes you please ask that we can that uh, please explain it uh, more uh, in detail or if there is an issue in understanding you can uh, raise a query and we will understand it more in detail more explicitly i feel yes, now sir. time to wind up the session right or uh, do you want to ask any any other question any one of you would like to have a question no sir so then we will wind up the session and uh, i would extend you very uh, good day for the rest of today and we will meet on uh, monday at 11 with our uh, mde 412 right yes sir. okay thank, thank you sir thank you so much thank okay. you sir have a good day thank you very much Thank you Tejpal ji